Hey, what's happening guys? My name is Anthony Vicencio. We're here today to show you a little bit about our new Rim Shield 2. Um, we've had it for a little bit of time. I don't know that a whole lot of people know exactly what this is used for, so we figured we'd have an informative video, show you a couple ways that this could be very useful, uh, especially for you guys that have maybe a shop and you have a customer that has really nice wheels and, and you want to be extra careful, make sure that you don't scratch them. Or if you have nice wheels yourself, um, it's every once in a while we make a mistake with the spoons and, and we get a pretty big gouge in a wheel. It's not uncommon. So this is a product that we developed uh, to mitigate that. It's a pretty flexible proprietary material so it's not gonna it's not gonna shatter or anything when you put your spoons to it so that's really nice very durable easy to use uh, and there's a couple different applications so we're, we're gonna go ahead and go over uh, the times when it could be useful uh, and when you would want to use it now when you purchase this it's gonna come in a pair so you'll get two of these uh, for right now I'm gonna use one and just go over a, a full tire change and then show you where it's gonna be very useful uh, when I would use this so and I'm just going to run through this really quick. Uh, we have a, a tire changing tutorial video uh, that has a lot more detail at some of the techniques we use to change our tires. This is going to be primarily focused on the rim shield. So I got the core out using my little core remover. And today I was feeling pretty fancy. I got a titanium wrench that I'm gonna pop this rim lock loose with. So, yeah, and this rim shield is especially valuable when folks come in with a uh, either a black wheel or um, some of the Yamahas have a really nice anodized blue wheel and, and some of the custom wheels that people buy nowadays are really trick. And when you have a wheel that nice, something like a simple scratch stands out a lot more. Now I got the Motion Pro tire irons. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna break the bead down starting on a lug and just get it to break down all the way. And thankfully this rider used up his tires so the carcass isn't too, too stiff right now. So this will be a little bit easier to use. Um, now, first things first, this is going to come in very valuable and very handy uh, when the bead is tightest on the wheel. So the first initial bites, which are going to be uh, probably the harshest, uh, you're going to want to use it. That, that's, you're most likely to, to scratch a wheel there because there's a lot, of, a lot of force going on. Um, right now, I'm going to pop this guy in right here. So you just push the bead down and it's pretty simple. I mean, it's not complicated at all. You just go slide it right here over the rim. And I'll probably use the pair, to be honest, and get started on it. But this first bite right here, that's, that's going to be a lot of force. It's pulling quite a bit to get this over this lip of the wheel. Um, press down on the opposite side. And then I'm going to hold that there. You can see how tight that is. Let me get my other spoon. And these rim shields have a little channel here where it's going to keep your spoon from sliding out of place. Uh, just because, again, like I said, you're going to use this when there's a lot of force being applied to the wheel. So you don't want to slip. And, and again, we don't want to cause scratches. So we, we want everything to be uh, as controlled as possible. So give that a nice little push there. And then we'll work this a little bit further, get a bigger bite. And then we'll do a little bit more. Perfect. And I could already feel where that was digging into the shield. So there's a good chance that, that right along the edge, it would have gave a little bit of a, a nice little kiss to the wheel. But uh, that being said, um, usually that part wears off over time. But uh, the rest of it, everything that you see right here, this is all the surface that you're trying to protect. So now that the, the really tight bites have been taken, and you can hear that too, now that the, the bead wants to come off on this side. So it's not going to be as crucial because it's really, really simple. 
Everything's coming off nice and easy. There we go. So we'll pop this up and set these down for a moment. And then to pull these out, I'm going to push up away a little bit and then I can pull this bead up and just pop those guys out. Slip it over to the other side. Again, we'll do a little trick here. Start on a lug, pop that down. I can, there we go. And again, nothing too crazy. Take your time with this stuff. Again, if you don't want to risk damaging your wheels, which is the purpose of this, take your time. Let's put that right there. Grab my other one and bring that one nice and close. And again, it's a fairly small bite. Nice and controlled. Beautiful. And it's pretty loose now. So we'll go the rest of the way. Now we got both sides off. Let's set these down. And again, I'll just pull this up, pop these guys out. And then this rider is throwing on a Geomax MX3S from Dunlop is a pretty sweet tire nice and grippy so we get our cornstarch baby powder in there so that way the tube doesn't chafe so that's about ready to go I'm gonna pull this off here slick little trick I learned not too slick today <laughs> but slick enough so the valve core is going back in the tube right now set this tire on and now this tire is not a directional tire so it's not going to matter how I put it on as far as whether I need to flip it to one side or the other so I'm going to loop one side real quick with my euro paste set this down here and I lined up the the dot with the valve stem it's not a necessary thing to do on off-road tires it's more of a quality control mark I know on some of the road race stuff it's uh, the light point of the tire but to be honest you do a couple feet in the mud and once you start getting stuff caked on your wheels it's not going to make a whole big a difference and then the speed isn't uh, as high sometimes in the off-road applications you run into that not so much in motocross though Alrighty, so now we got the little nut for the Schrader valve. I'm going to start in on putting the first bead on. And again, the key with all this stuff, we've got to take our time today. Make sure we don't scratch this wheel. That's all nice and clear. Okay, and what I'll do is I'm going to aim to have this as my end point. So my end point, typically when I do this, is gonna be opposite from my starting point, which is over where the valve stem is. So I'm gonna put this in here ahead of time, just like that, because that's where it's gonna be tightest. So if you wanted to be extra safe, you could put two there. Um, whether it's totally necessary, you know what, we'll err on the side of caution today because again, we're not trying to get any scratches. So these are gonna be set here uh, before we get to that point. So we, I have a big uh, end point here or a big window uh, where what I'm gonna aim for and the likeliness of me ending there, it's gonna be a lot easier because I have a bigger target now. So I'll slowly walk this over here. Make sure this is all up. There we go. So this is gonna clear on this side. I'm going to go just like that. And then now I want to be careful 
about removing my spoon and I don't want to again I can't stress this enough in any tire changing video you don't want to yank it all the way to the end like that you, you lose control of your spoon and then it wants to spit your spoon back out whenever you do that that's majority of the time you see people get themselves in a situation where they go and scratch their wheel so you want to avoid that don't go crazy with it it's very slow and controlled like that you just go 90 degrees right about there and that's plenty then you're going to take a nice little small bite like that 90 degrees and just walk it over. It might seem like it's gonna pop out, but then, then take a small bite. So we slide it over there. Money. Now that's popped out. This, I typically wouldn't do this, but since I have this shield here, I can just run that in and not risk scratching the wheel. So again, I'll slide this over. Get a little bit better bite and honestly you can see how tight this is getting here uh, so if I wanted to this is a pretty tight fit there's not a whole lot left here so you could imagine how hard or how much I would be scratching this if I if I didn't have these rim shields here so I'll throw this guy in there and we'll just finish her off so I was able to be pretty rough and again there's no chance of me scratching because of these guys. So I would say these are pretty handy. Again, you want to take your time with these. If you're, if you're using these, there's no reason to be rushing. Anytime, you, there's no, really no reason to be rushing on a tire change. Otherwise, you just get frustrated. So I'll lube this side up. Then my best friend, my best bud, always features in all my videos. The bead buddy right here. This guy's wonderful. There's a whole breakdown of what it does. It's pretty straightforward. Perfect. Now our bead buddy's in. And what I'm gonna do is show you the most valuable time that this is gonna come in handy. It's gonna be at my end point. So if you've seen the other instructional video of how to change an off-road tire, we, we start with the bead buddy, we work our way around, and then the bead buddy is going to be our end point at the very end. So I'm going to put this next to it where the end point would be because this is where it's going to get the tightest. The bead's going to be the tightest at this point. So let's go ahead and slide this in just because once it gets really tight, just like the spoons are where the spoons become difficult to slide in, the rim shield would become difficult to slide in. So, we'll start working our way around. And typically what happens, this is for the third time, but if I go beyond 90 degrees, which is right here where my spoon is, if I bring it further than that where I start going like this, it's going to kick my spoon out. And that's majority of the time what makes it difficult when you get to this point here uh, because this is again where the beads gonna be the tightest on the the wheel because it's the last little bit so when it spits it out there's a good chance it might scratch the wheel on its way out but more than likely it's gonna for sure scratch going on the way back in so if you keep it under control it, ideally it won't spit it out and you won't pinch your tube because you're not scooping under the tube and pressing it against the wheel. But a lot of times, even for myself, when I'm changing the tire, if you do enough of these, more than likely at some point, it's gonna spit out your, your spoon. So when that is the case, this is where the rim shield is a good insurance. So right here, it's really tight. You can see my spoon, it's still in there, it's all good, and ideally, you, you would get to this point and not have to pull this out. But let's just say you did. So let me pop this forward. And then I'm gonna take this one here. Here's another spoon. I'm gonna slide that in, and that was really tight going in. But now, as I work this over, these are gonna be the last bites and it's really tight. There's the tightest part of the entire job. 
and you just slowly work these. And now we're at 90, so instead of just going and, and yanking it down, I'm going to slowly work it side to side and be really gentle with it. And there we are. So, in a nutshell, there's a few spots where this was very valuable. Um, we took our time with this one. Uh, the same way we'd, we would take our time with uh, 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 any black set of wheels or a uh, set of wheels that were really worried about getting any sort of scuffs or scratches. Uh, we took our time with it and, and we were able to utilize where this came in handy. Uh, I was able to slide the spoon in and out. Um, didn't have to worry about gadging the rim or anything. Uh, you can examine it. We're going to have to run this around to uh, get some air in it. But before we do that, I'm going to wipe this down real quick so we can see what we're working with. And as far as any new scratches, which this thing didn't come in with any scratches really to begin with. I mean, and you look at it, it's not, it's not worn out. Usually the bead rolls over if you get some sand in here and you get this um, kind of brushed aluminum stripe all the way around the outer edge. This wheel doesn't even have that yet. I think that was the, the stock from the factory OEM tire that came off of it. And uh, there's really not that much time on this wheel, but also there's not any scratches on it too because we used our rim shield and uh, we did a good job. So this guy's almost ready to rock and roll. I'm gonna run this downstairs, get some air in it, and um, hopefully he enjoys his new tire. So just ran this downstairs and uh, didn't have any pinches and more importantly we didn't have any scratches thanks to this guy so if you're interested in one of these or want any more information you can always visit your local motion pro dealer or uh, you could visit our websites www.motionpro.com or check out our youtube channel which obviously you might be doing right now um, and hopefully we'll be releasing some more of these videos uh, giving you some more insight on some of our products and how they're used thanks guys <laughs>